What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another season of Shoot the Shit. I didn't have really any plans going into this season. I was in the talks of finding another co-host for the season. I was going to try to do this thing where I do like some guest co-host every season. Unfortunately, the two people that I you know contacted uh, kind of are in a bit of a heated rivalry. So I'm going to probably see if I could try to squash this. And maybe we can get both of them just to be the... Th Who knows what's going to happen. But uh, let me bring in Vincent real quick on the Zoom call. And uh, we'll see what's up. He should be... Okay, I just sent him the link. So he should be coming in right now. But I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, hey. Hey, man. What's up? How you doing? Hey, what's going on, brother? So um, about Shoot the Shit. I, I know we talked about, you know, you being the co-host for this season as, yeah. as kind of like the guest co-host. And, and I'm... Dude, I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm pumped. No, I, I I am pumped too. But I I I invited one other person, um, just because okay. I feel like you guys uh you guys work together. You guys are you guys are good friends, and uh, I just I hope we can settle this. So uh, let me I just sent him the link. So hopefully he should be shooting up any time now. So, All right. Um, but yeah, bro. But uh, so who is it? Hey, what's up, Anthony? Oh my god, it's AJ. It's a yeah, AJ. How you doing, AJ? Dude. What's he doing here? No, I, I, so hey, man, look, but look, okay, if so anyone look, that sounded a little dickish, but you know, I, 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 I thought, I thought you told me, I, I know what I, but I, I know what, I know what I told you, you know, but like, I, I thought like, you know, you guys, the, 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 you know, the rivalry here is you guys always are kind of competing who wants to be on the show more and more. So I just figure why not just have you both as co-hosts for season three of shoot the shit. I mean, I I was under the impression that I was going to be separating my uh my lead already, that you know that I already have. So I mean, I thought I was going to be given the opportunity to you know kind of catch up to that lead. I mean, it's not not like not like Vincent shouldn't be here. <laughs> I mean, hey. what, does he really need that lead? I you know what I, I think that I you know what. It's just fun to have you guys both on this season, so I I think we're gonna have a good time. Like, what do you guys say? Let's just let's get into it, cause I, I well, I'll wash my hands of it for now. You know, well, you know what? Hey, hey, if we if we both if we're both on here the entire season, or both you know, friends, we're, we're both coworkers. The, still, the numbers are still good. I'm still winning. That's yeah. that's all that matters. All Sorry, right. Right. for now. So I think, <laughs> I think we squashed it. Now you're two celebrity <laughs> guest hosts for Shoot the Shit season three. <laughs> Mr. Vincent and Mr. AJ, welcome to Shoot the Shit Season 3. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for having us. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm a long time listener. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now you acted like I'm in a freaking radio show now, man. First time listener, long time caller. No, I, I think it's cool because, you know... Uh, <laughs> If you look back at the history of Shoot the Shit, when we first started this, it was a couple of characters, a couple of, of you, you know, YouTube personalities and whatnot, and we all just came together and just shot the shit. I mean, we, we, we talk about haunt. We could talk about pretty much whatever we want to talk about. I mean, I know we're a horror haunt-based channel, but sometimes it's just good to just talk about life. It do be like that. It do, it be, do like be like that. that. It do be like that. But... 2023, screaming into 2023. Yeah. Screaming. 2022 and into 2023 yeah you should have huh. so I, I assume you know new year's eve going to new year's for you it was just one big scream into the pillow from into the void into this black abyss that i have i i don't know what it was honestly realistic like real stuff new year's was just super super plain and just really it was a weird new year's because it was raining too yeah. so like, I didn't even, like i i was sick and I was just like, the weather was just kind of like meh, and I was just kind of meh, and I was just like, ah, right. <laughs> I I just I think I we watched like Violent Night and Terrifier two. How what how was a uh, Violent Night? Violent was Night, things. dude. Violent Night is like the John Wick of Santa Claus movies, right there. Like. If you like John Wick and you like Christmas, you're gonna like Violent Night. Like David Harbour as Santa Claus, great. His whole motives are great. The only thing I wish they would have touched on more, and they show a little bit of the movie, is more of his like backstory of how he actually became Santa Claus. But like, okay. Other than that, I fucking love this movie. It's so fun. It's got its freaking heartfelt moments. It's got its hilarious moments, and it's got its badass moments. And David Harbour just kicks it all, puts the nail in the coffin, and everything. 
So that was a lot of fun. And then Terrifier 2, I have to say, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't a fan of Terrifier 2. You know, I can't comment on it because I haven't seen that one either. <laughs> I uh, I just felt it was very different from the first one. Like, they took everything we knew and loved from the first one, and they included it in this one, but hmm. got a little bit more mystical than it should have. So you, you wish that it would have, like, stayed more, like, just stayed grounded? Yeah, I mean, I, I understand how the first one ends and then how it, you know, starts. So, like, there's that kind of supernatural aspect to the character already there. Yeah. But they took it to, like, a whole other level where I was like, really, though? Does that does that have to be part of this movie? I Yeah. What, what did I miss? Uh, we're what talking movie? about Terrifier 2. Terrifier. Oh, I couldn't get into that. Wasn't a big fan of it. I, I was saying I liked the first one a lot, and then watching this one, it was like, it was something completely different. Like, they took... Everything you knew and loved from the first one and put it in the second one, but then they added that whole new level of like that supernatural, mystical feeling, and I was like, I don't know. What's the big thing? I mean, at least I, I'm, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen either of these movies, but I heard, I'm just basing off of this on assumption, that it was better than Halloween Ends. Yeah, 100%. Every, everyone hated that movie. I haven't seen it. I, I have not uh, based I, on this, but... I've yet to hear one good thing about that movie. Uh, you talking about Halloween Ends, where Michael Myers is literally in the movie for 15 minutes? Yeah, that, that would be that the Halloween one. Ends? The one I sat through and tried time after time after scene after scene to try to give it a shot and try to give it that chance and try to give it the hope that it's going to be a fucking really good Halloween movie, only to be let down time after time after time again. And even the final battle with Laurie and Michael wasn't that good, and that's sad to say. Dang, it's that sucks because the first, the, like the first, the first one was right really the good. The yeah. second one was pretty good. It well, not as good as the first one, but it was it was still up there. Like, but yeah, just to hear that that, that uh, finale is. I I will tell you this: it shouldn't have been called Halloween Ends. They should have called it if they would have called it anything else but like Halloween when the title. I would yeah. have been okay with it. Like if they would have called it like The Strodes, a Halloween uh, Halloween story. Then I would have been like, mm -hmm. okay, fine, yes, that's what it focuses on. Lori and her granddaughter. I get that. Cool. Mm -hmm. like, fuck, dude. I don't know who wrote this shit, but I was like, <laughs> is this the yeah. same Danny McBride that was in Eastbound and Down and Vice Principles and all these other great things he wrote? But this? Mm -hmm. I was like, wrote Danny McBride helped write all three of those Halloween movies. Dang. Fuck. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. That's cool. Him and David Gordon Green are like good friends. They've been working together since Eastbound, and like even way back in the day. Hmm. The last film, though, I think it's really hard to like finish a series, though. Like that's a lot of pressure because yeah. you have such many graphical people looking into like anticipating the end of this whatever it is series. So yeah. you're probably gonna please at the at least half, at the most half. I so I don't know, man. I mean, with with I mean, the trilogies are out there. What good horror movie trilogies are out there? It's like trilogies in general. Because like you'll... John you'll Wick has been a great trilogy so far. John Wick. Okay. There's that. Are you talking about like like modern trilogies? Or, or just like in general? In general. Because like you got Back to the Future. Good I think trilogy. those are... Good trilogy. 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 Yeah. The, ori the original Star Wars, great trilogy. The prequels, great trilogy. We and that was it. It ended after the prequel. We don't have to talk about the new ones because they just <laughs> anything, films. anything films. after you know, like Mandalorian and on good. Anything that's fucking related to seven, eight, nine, not so good. And just to clear the air, it's not because we had a female Jedi or a female. No, I actually, as an yeah. actress, I love Daisy Ridley. <laughs> no, I, it was strictly the story. Yeah, it like it, the the last. Yeah movie Reagan? it felt Reagan. lazy 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 writing from start to start to end yeah someone just, like i, I wish movie. that they would have gone into the legends you know lore and and dealt more with with luke and mar jade and like you know their actual kids and you see i've i've talked about this with diehard star wars fans too and and same thing with like my stepdad he's a diehard star wars fan and the one thing we talked about was had they would have came out and said, we're not relating anything to the books, we're not relating anything to the lore, we're going all original, this is all brand new, this is all a new story. Had they would have came out and said that, I would have been a little bit better with these with this trilogy. 
But the fact that they forced us to kind of thirty years For- after the original trilogy, and this is what this is what happens. This is the future of Star Wars going forward. I'm like, no. They didn't have to see. I would. I would have even been okay if they wanted to to retcon a little and build off of what Dave Filoni did in Clone Wars and have Rey be a Kenobi. Like maybe she's Kenobi and Satine's kid. Like that would have been awesome. And that's when a little man, who, that was a thing. who started the who who was the the mastermind to direct the first movie of the MCU, which is entitled Iron Man, came in the door and said. Let me do a soft reboot for Star Wars for you, and let me make it so the fans oh. like it. And his name is John Favreau. John Favreau. He's, he's John, John Favreau and Dave Filoni are single-handedly saving the Star Wars. Yep. Genre. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I, I'm not the the biggest Star Wars fan. I'm I'm a, I'm a casual Star Wars fan. I know enough to know. Um, and so going into the the last three films we watched just kind of completely just gave me a softy, you know? I was like, this isn't like, you had a great start with J.J. Abrams and then you just completely destroyed any type of progression you did with the fucking, uh, The Last Jedi. And then you just end-gamed the last film. Yeah. Well, I think even J.J. Abrams came out and said, I should never have given up the directorial yeah. duties for the second and third film. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know why immediately after Last Jedi came out too, they're like, we're going to give Rain Johnson his own trilogy. I'm like, Let's just not do no. that. Let's just you know the Knives Out movies. He's fine doing those. Those are fucking phenomenal movies, dude. I will. I was gonna do say, those. I'm so glad that Star Wars failed because that allowed him to do Knives Out. Yeah, and Glass and Onion. Good. Knives the, the two Knives Out films have been. I haven't seen Glass I, Onion yet. I gotta watch Glass Onion. I like the first one. The <laughs> second the Glass Onion isn't bad. It's 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 still up to, up there. But the first one was just kind of like, I mean, you never forget your first and that first like. <laughs> shit when they put it together it's like oh that's awesome and then like fucking benoit blanc uh daniel craig he's one of my fucking favorite characters at least in in, in, in class onion he has a more of like a comical side to him like, i like the way he talks stuff. in there it's like you would not expect him to talk like that because he's daniel fucking craig james bond right you know and that's kind of cool i like that but like what i was saying with john favreau he the like the mandalorian holy shit like everyone Everyone who's peak, just like absolute Star Wars nerd, was very critical of it, but really extremely stoked because, like, all right, cool. Everyone knows who Boba Fett is, but they don't know about you know the Mandalorian lore. You know, mm-hmm. don't know that. And like, I'm still learning some shit with uh with with it with my with my girlfriend who's teaching me all this shit about like the Mandal uh, the, the the war of fucking I forget what it's called, but Mandalore. Mandalore. Thanks, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's making it so that. It's piqued our interest, and it becomes this great storyline, and now it's continuing forward. I'm a little bummed because I should have been watching, because I, I haven't been watching Book of Boba Fett, and uh-huh. I have to watch Book of Boba Fett to get, like, the end of the, Mon- the Mandalorian or somewhat, and then you can watch again, but I don't like the cross cross branding, but it's still gotten... It's gotten me involved. It's gotten me even more stoked about like you know I potentially cosplaying, getting into more into the lore of Star Wars, getting more into the lore of Mandalorian. He did a really good fucking job, and he started with Iron Man, and he took like the most unlikely one hero, unlikely actor who had been in and out of fucking jail and rehab and rehab, um, and turned that shit into gold. So I think John Favreau, only John Favreau. I will say this, because he took a chance on Robert Downey Jr., not only did he save his career, he saved his fucking life. Oh, yeah. There's a reason why they uh, Robert Downey Jr. actually handpicked Burger King to be the sponsor for the first Iron Man film because he remembers the day his life changed. He was eating this really shitty Whopper, and he had, like, X amount of um, X amount of cocaine in the car and he just realized how shitty this whopper tasted <laughs> and made him reflect on his own life he's like i gotta fucking turn this around <laughs> and so he did and then he got iron man and they were like all right we're talking about sponsors he's like burger king i'm like fuck okay <laughs> burger king got a nice payday yep yep they did and like that started it that started off the whole fucking mcu and here we are what like 13 years 14 years later yeah almost 15 yeah, years later crazy. no man. there's like no movies anymore it's just superhero movies that's why i'm keeping my eye closely on james gunn's dc 
Yeah. That should be interesting. I have a lot I, of high uh, hopes. I thoroughly enjoyed Suicide Squad. Peacemaker was amazing. Brilliant. Um, <laughs> I, I'm very curious to see how they proceed with uh, our sparkly Batman. Um, because I really loved him. I loved his portrayal. Um, Sorry, the Batman is like... We should have had Matt Reeves direct a Star Wars movie because they would have been amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, see, I think what made the Batman so good is their reliance on practical effects. And I, I think that that's like, in, in film as a whole, like, when you do everything practical, it just comes out so much better. Like, mm-hmm. not not to knock any, anything that, you know, the visual artists do because they, they are artists too. But it's just something about, like, actually having practical effects on set that just like elevate the the film to a different level the whole car chase scene all practical scene car chase the the elevator scene yep yeah the elevator scene 100 percent practical dude all of that i mean you talk about Colin, a, yep. dude you talk about colin farrell as performance as a penguin you know like that is the most comic modern day accurate portrayal of the penguin we've gotten thus far and don't even get me started on Batman. Everybody knows to know me. I'm a diehard Batman fan. I love the fucking character so much. He was a so fucking much. detective in this movie. Dude. What a fucking concept. What I love so much is is Matt Reeves took a lot of inspiration from both the Zodiac Killer and the movie Seven. Oh, and yeah. For sure. It was fucking, that's how you make a Batman film. Yes, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be all fucking sunshines and rainbows. It's going to be fucking dark and you're going to see some disturbing awesome. stuff. But that's gotcha. Well, especially since what it was—it was based off of uh, the Long Halloween too. Yeah. Where like it, that was already a dark and gritty storyline. <sighs> yeah. No, that was like, great. I I'm excited to to see the the second film when when that one gets uh you know, put out. It gets greenlit because I don't think there's been an announcement. It's greenlit. Yeah. It's greenlit. James Gunn has yeah, come I out and said that, that his universe is fine. Yeah. Okay. Matt Reese has a script ready to go. I think they're going to start filming really soon. And also, fucking, oh. let's look at this too. Fucking Joaquin Phoenix's Joker 2, man. I'm actually oh. interested for in it. I mean, I, I, a musical? With Lady Gaga's in it, I think? Lady, Gar- it? Lady Gaga as Harley Lady Quinn, Gaga. bro. Nah, I'm sorry. My that's going to be That's going to be a freaking really good Harley Quinn. I'm sorry to say it. Music and acting. She's been getting like, pretty good as an actress, but she's a singer, and she'll be that would so be I, naturally I her. Say this. Lady Gaga surprised me in A Star Is Born, yeah. and I like I looked at her differently and like in a much more positive light because like you know I'm I'm wouldn't say that I'm a fan of Lady Gaga. I think she, that she makes amazing music, but like I didn't it like her performance made me like respect her more as an artist, both musically and like as an actress. Yeah. Okay. That's respect. I respect that. And also, same. Yeah. Like, she's like she's got bangers. I'm not, like, an active listener, but, like, every now and then, I'll, I'll listen to uh, Paparazzi. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, my guilty Dude, pleasure. bad romance? Come on, bro. The telephone? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, yes. Hello? Yes. So, yeah. okay. we, we, but we all have our guilty pleasures when it comes to Lord Gaga. Um, but I don't know. Like, a musical? Like, like I feel like... I okay. This is how I look at it every time, and you can even look at this back to the first movie. Mm-hmm. The same director who made the Joker made the fucking Hangover trilogy and Deadpool, and then he got too big for his britches, and when they asked him to come back, Todd to Phillips Deadpool, did Deadpool? No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Did Todd Phillips do Deadpool? Todd Phillips did Deadpool. Let me just double check. Let me see before I'm. Did he hit up a uh, hit up Dustin? <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker up. also I know another know another one that he actually did that was confirmed was old school. Interesting. I mean, I, I just have faith in them. if these fucking directors have this hidden in them. Like when I watched Clerks 3, I was like, what the fuck did I just watch? Because that was a masterpiece of a film. I've heard it was really, really sad. Oh, never mind. Hold on. Tim Miller did that. Tim Miller did it, yes. Cause then Tim Miller, I think, directed the first John Wick. Gotcha. Okay. I thought the fir- I thought uh, the guy that did John Wick was a like a former stunt stunt guy. No, the first the director of the first one was uh, Tim Miller, because in the credits, um, oh no, one of the producer. I think he was a producer in John Wick, because in the credits okay. uh, it says produced by the same the same asshole who killed John Wick's dog. So I was like, you can't even get mad at that, really, to be honest with you. Bang. 
I don't know, man. I mean, I, I look at the future of just movies in general, man. I mean, we're getting closer and closer every day to just being immersed into the goddamn film. What's coming mm-hmm. out this year? What isn't coming out this year? <laughs> Ant-Man and the Lost Quantumania. That's, that's actually coming out in a few weeks. Yeah. yeah. Soon. Got soon. Take, you guys get your tickets ready? No, yeah. I'm probably going to get a matinee. Yeah, I'm going to – I got a – I think I'm doing a like a 5 or oh. 6 o'clock showing on Friday. There uh, is – there was a movie that I wanted to see, and I, I don't remember what it was right now. Evil Dead Rise? That looks pretty good. That one looks amazing. Oh I was like, we're t- okay, but uh, okay, let's talk about this for a second. What's with all these horror franchises taking a fucking page from Jason's book and going to fucking New York and Manhattan? Right? I mean, like, I feel like... Like, can we do a fucking, like, L.A. one for once? Like, can we bring one of these famous serial killers over here so we could be like, we, we fucking made it on the map? Hey man, Ghostface. Yeah, Ghostface. He was the Scream Three. Uh, yeah, uh, right? that's not the best Scream I mean, movie though. Oh, yeah, oh okay, but like all three of them took place in California. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like kind of more up north California. That's like uh, we're that's like kind uh, of more like near wine country almost. I think yeah. the first Halloween was filmed in Pasadena, yeah, Pasadena. Yeah, but it's supposed to be in Haddonfield, Illinois. Um, that'd be an LA-based serial killer. Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel like LA gets a lot of like the TV show serial killers. Well, I love. I'll be honest. I'm watching a show on fucking that's taking place in LA right now. The Rookie on ABC. I love that show right now. Oh, with uh, Nate Nathan Fillion? Fillion. I fucking love Nate Fillion. Dude, I loved him in Castle. Yeah, and then to see him on The Rookie now, it's like okay, it's just another cop show, and it's just him hitting the reset button and doing something different. That, guy, that guy's pretty talented. He's pretty cool. Los, uh, Los Angeles based serial killers and Google is asking for me for my location. I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Google. Nice try, <laughs> Google. <laughs> Not that fucking stupid. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's kind of scary, though, that they were asking for your location, bro. Yeah, that's I'm gonna, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll the search. I'll, I'll figure it out later. Um, <laughs> throw, on the, uh, throw on the VPN. Yeah, I'm stoked for the 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 scream six movie because i saw that the most recent teaser trailer uh, and everyone was about it, like oh what the fuck why is he using a gun to kill people i'm like well first of all he didn't gun? bring the gun somebody tried to shoot him with a gun he grabbed it then decided to ah fuck it and then started using it himself it's like something i haven't seen the in rules have movie. changed obviously because he's never <laughs> done that in the past obviously until the very end when the killer's revealed then they have a gun i haven't seen the fifth one and it's because all of these cool films and TV shows and everything, they come out during haunt. And I don't think that people realize that I just, I don't have a life from like September 1st to Christmas. I mean, yeah. I do have a life. It's just a very busy life. Well, yeah, but I, I, any, any film that comes out, any book that comes out, any video game that gets released. I just, I do not touch it until after like Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't talk to anything. Don't talk to Vince about anything that came out in October until at least February. <laughs> yeah, please, please. I mean, you got Modern Warfare two at least, right? I did. Okay. Uh, I played with you. You have yesterday. <laughs> well, I wasn't very good, but I did play with you. We do pop off, <laughs> and, and, the, and the reason why I'm not very good came out during Haunt. Did we <laughs> play a Warzone game together? We did. Uh, we did. Huh? Fall, and I kept fucking lagging out. Yes, I was getting pissed off, bro. Not fun. You got Modern Warfare 2, AJ? Nah, I'm I'm not too big on the video games. I are mean, you I'm more, not like... Are you like, is your era like Galaga, Pac-Man? Oh, no. Kidding. I'm I just had, kidding. I'm old. just kidding. <laughs> well, I had Bandicoot, I had Spyro, I had fucking Resident Evil. Oh, Resident Evil 4 Remastered's coming out, bro. I'm probably going to grab that. I... Okay, so here's the thing. I... So, because I am fucking... 24 i'm probably the youngest one here um i like how you guys just both agreed yeah that's true uh, you, uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm spoiled with the remastered or the newer resident evil games i didn't start picking up resident evil till resident evil 7 okay. that's because they kind of rebooted the franchise at 7 they kind of went like a whole different route with the game which i loved um yeah. so I right this you off you know, the only resident evil games that i've ever played have been at, like arcades next to time crisis those are fun those are fun too. That's not bad. Yeah, those those are pretty good. Yeah, those are. I was actually playing one yesterday at Knots. Time Crisis though. 
Time Crisis is hit. Time Crisis? What was your favorite Time Crisis, though? Four? It's got to be four. Two. Two. Two's, the yeah, only one I, two's the only one I ever fucking played at arcades. <laughs> What a different arcades! I didn't. I you did. Know what? I honestly didn't even know that there were like different time crises because every arcade that I have ever been to has always been four. Yeah, that's honestly pretty true. <laughs> like <laughs> for me too. It must be going to some retro arcades then. Oh. Time crisis four. Four. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, after after Resident Evil Seven came out, I fucking was hooked on that. And then they came out, and they're like, "We're gonna remaster Resident Evil Two with the Resident Evil Seven engine," and I was like, "Oh, I could get behind that because I can't play that shitty ass game now." I'm yeah. not saying the story shitty. I'm just saying the graphics at the time. Obviously, yeah, those were probably the graphics. Yeah. Are... yeah. <laughs> so they put it on the Resident Evil Seven, and I'm like, "This game is fucking beautiful." So I played that, and then um. I was ready for Resident Evil 8 to come out. Then they, during COVID, they dropped Resident Evil 3 remastered, and mm. I think that was the year they were doing like a whole like 25th anniversary of like Resident Evil or something. Or that was last year, um, but they did this whole thing and Resident Evil 3 remastered dropped. So that was during COVID, and I was off of work. So what did that mean? Well, after I was done playing video games with my friends, it was like midnight. I was like, all right, I'm gonna play Resident Evil 2. I didn't go to bed till like 6 a.m. because I actually pulled an all nighter and played the game and beat it. Beautiful. That was such a fucking trip. It was. <laughs> like, I could do that then. I, I could barely do that now. You lost Dude. all sorts of time. Yeah. You had no idea what the fuck day it was. It was like the I, last I of us. Like, I feel like COVID, like, ruined video games for me in a way because I just, like, I had time to, like, play them. Hmm. And then now when I play them, I don't have that same, like, time or energy that I did. So I'm just kind of like, ah, this isn't, this isn't what I, like, I'm I'm chasing that that COVID video game high, and I just I can't I can never I can never reach it. Yeah, no, I yeah. get you. Even when you're like you may have some time, like I can stay up a little later to to play some more video games and you know try to catch nostalgia. Mm-hmm. No, I'm only, like, in bed by like ten ten thirty, and it's like fucking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fuck. Yeah. For real, I've been in bed by like fucking nine thirty because I gotta get up at fucking six thirty. I was like, I need my sleep because I'm be cranky. Yep. Yeah, no, I get that. So, yeah, so then that happened. I beat Resident Evil 3. Then Resident Evil Village finally came out. I was so hyped for that because I was like, all right, 7 left in a cliffhanger. I need to fucking play 8. And uh, I played 8, and I had so much fun. It brought me was back. That, was that the one that all the people were, were like, simping over the, the vampire, the vampire lady? lady? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember her last name, but they called her, like, Mrs. I think it was, like, Miss D. You started with a D or something. Yeah. What, was 7 the VR one? They did they, they did do a VR version for seven. Okay, I I'm remembering when that one came out. I think they just I think before they remastered four for the consoles, actually, there's already Resident Evil Four for the VR remastered just exclusively okay. for VR. Um so now they're finally this year they're finally gonna release Resident Evil Four remastered to the console. So point being is I was so spoiled by those engines now. I've been playing all the Resident Evil remasters from two all the way to three, and now I'm gonna get to play four, which I hear is the best in the fucking franchise. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, so I'm excited to play it with this new remastered engine. These things look so fucking beautiful now, and it's so smooth the gameplay, and it's beautiful. Right? No more fucking, fucking... cameras following you in like multiple directions. It's just one continuous camera following you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I hate that, bro. Like the camera's like up in the. Why is it all the way up in the fucking corner? I don't. I can't I'm, see shit, man. <laughs> I'm walking all the way to the other side of the hallway, and I can't even see where I'm going. And then the other camera, <laughs> then it switches cameras. I'm like, well, who designed this game? You, just, you gotta guess, man. I guess it, so. it, it builds that suspense. It builds that frustration. <laughs> the time it was, especially it was... back in the day when consoles used to fucking overheat like crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, like, oh man, I miss it though. Silent Hill was the one that <gasps> terrified me. Silent Hill's coming back. Mm, I don't know. I like fucking. <laughs> So they're, I think they're remastering Silent Hill two because it's coming up on an anniversary, okay. and then well, they're gonna cool. they're gonna re, they're gonna do a brand new Silent Hill game after all these years, and I'm like fucking finally, bro! I've been waiting for Silent Hill. I'm fucking mad that we were robbed of what could have been PT with fucking what was it? Oh, Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus. Yeah, what's it, what's it called? Something I forget what, 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 what video game it was called. They just called it. it they just called it. Oh, Silent, it was called. It was Silent Hill. It was for Silent Hill. Like it, it was, uh, the, oh, I remember it. Is, but they ended up making their own fucking like. Oh, Death, Death Stranding. Death Stranding. I heard that game really good though. I, 
uh, sure. I, I haven't played it. I plan on playing it, but I'm just going to bitch and gripe about it a little bit more. <laughs> because uh, you, because it wasn't Silent Hill? Yeah. It wasn't Silent Hill. It was like, what could have been? You know, like, what, yeah. what yeah. the fuck? Because that, tra- that PT game, the playable trailer, it's fun. fucking terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Have you, so, Vince, have you ever seen that trailer at all? Or have you ever seen anybody play it? I don't know that I have. So, I, it, I, do, I do remember, like, the when it was announced that like Norman Reedus and, and Guillermo were, were going to collaborate on this video game. And I do remember like it transitioning into death stranding, but like, I don't. So that game was interesting and fun in the sense that it was a mind fuck of a game because you were in one room, the entire fucking game. And every time you went through the door, you'd come back out and just be in the same room. However, every time you went through said room, the scenes would intensify more and more. It would be different. Things would yeah. change. You'd see something. You'd hear something. Like you'd see some disturbing shit. So, yeah. Somebody reaches out and closes the door. <laughs> Fuck. The cat made Dang. a cameo. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I immediately after following this game, and I know you guys probably, or at least you, AJ, that it's, that's seen it. I know you probably thought the same thing. That that would honestly be the simplest and probably easiest concept for a fucking haunt ever oh yeah there's been plenty of people i've heard come up with an idea like they all want to come up with this maze where you're just just do like a 30 minute experience you know what i mean And you just keep walking in circles yeah all right that'd be kind of (laughs) cool i i would like to make it like pt though because there was something just so special about pt when you were watching that you were like you don't know what was going to happen next so like i would want people to go through being like okay i'm going (laughs) to this room again what am i what's going to happen next Mm-hmm. Yeah, if done correctly, that'd be a fucking sick maze. Yeah. I feel like just because of how guests are, they would back that maze up so bad because they'd just be like, I was just here. Do I need to go backwards? I'm like, no, no, just keep moving forward. So that, that would be moving forward. That would be part of my directions. No matter what, if you think you're going in a circle, you technically are. So just keep going forward when <laughs> well, it would be on a light system. So like you, I would want the guests to interact with every little thing that we're throwing at them. That way it gives yeah. – because the way I would do it is make it in a big, like, uh, obviously a square. So when, you know, you come out of the hallway, I want it to look like as you open the door, you're coming through the same hallway you were just in. So it would just be mm-hmm. an ever a never-ending loop kind of thing. So, like, when you exit yeah. the, that one room at the end where it's the chandelier, you exit and you enter the hallway again. And so it's just a never-ending fucking loop. But it mm-hmm. gives enough – I would do it so it's, like, time. So, like, when it's time to go, the light shines on the door. That way it gives the next room preparation to, like, okay, they did this this time the first time around. So when they come back around, we need to have this ready. You know what I mean? So it's, like – it's, like, a system where people work together and shit. So would you would you do it more of, like, an escape room type thing as opposed to, like, a maze? <sighs> it's kind of hard because I wouldn't have people really, like – it's not a it's not a thing where you got to interact with things just to escape. It's like a thing where like we're gonna. I would just say at least one person in your group has to remember everything that they've seen thus far because you're gonna notice things every time you go around the second time or the third time. It's like okay that would that wasn't open this time. Why is it open this time? You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it's just mostly being very observant, which I know it's a lot to ask for, but. <laughs> you get a lot of like what's it called, um, benefit to the doubt with a lot of our guests <laughs> and the mental stability and ca- capability and uh, overall sobriety uh, to be able to do something like that. You know, there's a, I, there's a, a park ranger saying that I'm going to butcher and, and it's something that they have to consider when designing the, uh, the bear proof, you know, trash cans. And it's that there's considerable, considerable overlap between the smartest bears and the dumbest humans. <laughs> Uh... But... The quotes. I, feel like, I feel like I feel like every episode this season will get at least one quote from Vincent. Oh, probably, hundred percent. Yeah, there, there's your quote of the day from Vincent. There's, there's, your, there's, your, there's, there's your there's your there's, there's, there's your segment, Vincent. Okay, you, that's your segment quote of the day. Oh, quote thank you. Now we gotta figure. Now I'll we gotta finish that. figure out a segment for AJ. It'll be uh, the the cat's cameo. <laughs> the cat's cameo. <laughs> Did you uh did you guys see that uh Rob Zombie and Alice Cooper announced a tour today? I did. I did, I did Dude, indeed. I was so excited and then followed by immediate disappointment because the two dates that like I would be able to see them aren't potential haunt dates. Oh man. I mean all and you I mean, know all the all the dates are released already, so I mean you can already pre plan it. But 
Well, I mean, yes and no. Like I know they'll probably add like if if it's a big hit this year, they'll probably add like a Wednesday or something. Like they did. I don't know if they did that. Did they do that last year? Uh, not. Yeah. Did they add any other? Well, dates? no, no, no. I'm saying I'm saying the the tour dates are no. are uh I believe it's a, a Saturday in Anaheim and then like a a Sunday in uh, San Diego, some something, something like that. They already announced the fucking dates for Haunt this year. Yeah, it's the fourteenth and the thirty first. Yeah, which means Haunt's gonna end on a Tuesday this year. Yep. <laughs> um, Sometimes that means you're gonna have to probably work a Monday too. Then. Mm, they might maybe. open. I think they're gonna open that Monday. Why wouldn't they? Why would you shut it down for a day and then open it the next? <laughs> uh, because <coughs> it's all they, would, deep, they don't. They don't want us working a certain number of days in a row. So I think if they did that, then they, they, we would have to do Thursday, Friday, okay. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So that'd be six days, which I think that you'd have to yeah, like so that, that'd be a that'd be a, a stretch for a lot of haunt monsters already. And I I don't think that Knots would want to deal with the like how packed was Halloween night last year? Surprising, oh, it's about as packed as opening night. <laughs> really? It was kind of. <laughs> I went in as a guest um, I that went. night. What are I doing? Home? It was oh, like I went to scare. And then it turned to 45, and it was 60, then it was 90 minute waits for most of the mazes. I was yeah. like, this is ass. I'm going to say that was, that was Grimoire. Yeah. Grimoire. Gr- Grimoire was... Yeah. But. Well, no, yeah. It... I would say with Bloodline, they worked on that a little bit, but it was still long because they took out a lot of like the inner, inner, in between fucking scenes. Yeah. And then. I... Oh. I feel bad for Bloodline and for the pops, the uh, the the manager at the start of the season. I feel like it that maze could have been so much, and I, I felt like it was a little rushed. Um, I feel like if they had just waited till the fiftieth to to maybe unveil it, then we would have had you know a little little bit more cohesive storytelling and a little bit little better understanding of. You know how, and also how to proceed. A lot of the ta- like, uh, it was just a, a really shitty year for it because a lot of the talent just fucked off. Yeah. At the start, I think what was it opening weekend? They had dropped thirteen people. Fuck. Yeah, it was insane. But yeah, Pop Pops was saying that he had like thirty people on his roster. They just never showed up, <laughs> and it, it, and there was an issue filling the spots until like week three or four. And by that point, it's just like Haunt, like Haunt's halfway over. I don't know, you know, what what bringing in someone, someone brand new to to this thing and trying to train them, you know, in just a few hours, like how 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 much they can elevate, you know, a maze. I mean, I was actually funny you mentioned that. I was talking to Dustin over the weekend about, about Haunt and just like how the 51st anniversary is going to be really, really rough because a lot of people aren't coming back. Mm hmm. And people like, you know, it'd be, be kind of funny. Or like, wouldn't be surprised if they heard that. Like, uh, hang on, one quick. <laughs> you just see him yelling. <laughs> you just see him yelling at the cat. All yours. <gasps> <laughs> oh, hey, he's back. Hey, that's not What's getting cut. On, I'm sorry, that's not getting cut. Because <laughs> all sorry. I saw was this. <laughs> Is, excuse me, gentlemen. I'll be right back. <laughs> well, I've, I've got this elderly cat, and my my Morty, the other cat, keeps fucking with him. I'm like, stop oh, fucking with the cat. Stop fucking with the old geriatric cat. <laughs> uh, but long story short, we got to talking about how interesting it would be if we had like hired people in waves, like we have the initial hiring, and then we have people that we look for. To initial for you know of course after the first or second week people would drop that's when that second wave would come in like hey like on calls essentially mm-hmm. yeah. hey would you like to so that way if we do drop people which we will we'll have people on reserve that are a lot more fresh and can you know say like all right like a part-time position essentially. yeah do you, do you know why knots won't do that hmm. because it makes sense <laughs> Oh, there goes it my. Makes too much, well, much Vince, sense. thank you, Vince. There goes my media application. Just... Yep. Hey, hey, man. Hey, there goes my talent position. It's so. out the door. It's just you know. <laughs> there goes my career. If I ever wanted to collab with Knots, they're just out the door. 
Sorry, my bad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey man, no, no I'll, like I'll be honest you with you. Get, you already got the Horror Nights media badge, all right? I don't. All right. Okay. All right. That was like okay. That may I if it, it may never happen again, but I'm glad it happened at least once. You did. So I'm very grateful for that. Um. I, I'll be honest with you, like, and I and I said it before we went on air, like, I, I just, I, I think that I'm coming to the realization now as we're talking about it, I think I'm not as big of a Knots fan during the day offs and, and the off season because mm. for some reason to me, it's just not the same as it was when I was a little kid. Like, I just remember That's having a lot more, you know what I mean? I just remember having a lot more fun. And now that I'm adult, I think just realizing the realization of like, Shit, it costs fucking five dollars for a soda. Fuck that shit, bro. I'll just drink some water from the fountain. Like, welcome. Yeah, <laughs> being an adult sucks. Anyone who's uh, looking forward to it, unless you have a really good career lined up, that it's a dream job and it's your American dream. I mean, it's just like it I think not. Just they're they're trying to better themselves, and for the most part, they have. They've become because back back in the day, it was not that everyone that haunt. That scary farm that everyone looked looked forward to, and it was their mm -hmm. main team maker, and that's what kept Cedar Fair their pockets full. Now they're trying to be able to do that without having haunt, or like having the same draw and same money making that they get with haunt, but make more as well year round. I and will say that is that that is like a fear of mine is that after fifty, that haunt like they're gonna go so hard for this. And that after that, I'm like, I'm genuinely worried that Han is just going to fade away because they have been moving in recent years to, you know, elevate the other year round events at at Scary Farm, you know, at Knott's. And I feel like if they continue to, to elevate and allocate funds for, you know, these year round events, year round events, well, that's those funds got to come from somewhere. And unfortunately, like I have a feeling that it, it could possibly come from the Scary Farm budget, which I, I hope it doesn't. I hope I'm wrong. But I I definitely wouldn't be like completely surprised if like after well, fifty it kind of it, faded. It also you gotta look at it on a standpoint of what knots does year round. Right now their first event of the year um that they they just kicked off this past weekend was the peanut celebration. Mm -hmm. Um, which is like the first major full event of the year because the winter stuff bleeds into January by kind of force, you know, that's just what they do. Um, so mm -hmm. this is like the first full event that happens in 2023, which uh, we got to check out uh, yesterday uh, when I went. Um, and as far as as budget goes for those things, it's not really there. There's not much put into it as much as I would say the the second closest budget filled thing for that park would be Christmas time. Um, yeah, but like the I mean, other that could also be though that they're coming off a a year in which uh underperformance was was a thing in terms of uh, a certain policy that went into effect yeah and, um, and uh, you know like i went on sunday and the, and you know it was dead sunday but i figured because the football games were on sunday that ain't no one was gonna yeah. go to fucking scary or not for the day you know what i mean like you know that makes sense so i was kind of enjoying it because the park was like it wasn't empty but it was it wasn't like crowded it was just like it was cool it was flowable you know and i enjoyed it but um you know, the, you look at all these other events, like you look at Peanut Celebration, you look at Boys and Berry Festival, you look at Ghost Town Alive. A lot of the stuff that they use for those things is just kind of recycled and repainted. You know what I mean? And just like, okay, we're, we had this booth over here. Let's move this booth over here and just repaint it and then theme it to what it is. So when you look at Haunt, obviously the, the money and the budget goes into majority of it would be for lighting, sound, and, and, and lumber. And, and, you know, then they got paint, dressing, you know, they got all the fucking props, everything like that. So I feel like there's way more money that goes into haunt in general. And this goes for like any haunt or any like event like this at theme parks than any other event, you know, year round. Like, like I said, Christmas would be the next best thing because there is a lot of decorations that go into Christmas, but mm -hmm. I don't think they're not nearly as much as this are haunt. So I feel like with the budget they make from haunt, you kind of have to leave that budget alone because if you touch it, it, it really fucks up a lot of things and, and, and past, you know, experiences and not just that not scary fun, but other, other haunts across the world, you know, when budget runs out, then that means you got to kind of come up with an alternative, which usually ends in the shade of black. Yep. I think they, I think they rotate their, 
what they put into how much how much they put into what event and i think they know how much of a draw they get with scary farm Mm -hmm. considering how how it's changed uh see that that's the other thing too is that i feel like halloween and and the the holiday itself has changed i feel like that more so like there like there was a weird period of time for like a few years where i feel like it, it wasn't popular and i feel like now it's starting to slowly become popular again like it, so i just like i don't know how like the few obviously like i can't tell the future but like i my fear is that like halloween become like drops off again and it just happens to you know be a bad time where you know who like who knows like the the world you know could could fall into another pandemic or you know something like that like that would to no i know that would like like that would cripple everything and yeah, knock on but you know like no one knows rub the months in rub the months in the months in the months hey, months it's supposed to be kill them all but it's months in oh yeah i got that at midsummer scream handmade hand carved my, my girlfriend like gifted that, that for me what happened sick. i feel like after 50 years it just to kind of rise and fall, rise and fall, not. Uh, well, see, that, that's like the greatest testament, too, is that the, this event has been around for 50 years. Like, and, and I hope I hope it goes on for at least another 50 more. I personally don't think that Scary Farm is going anywhere. Um, not now, not oh, anytime soon. Um, I feel like there is still a new, another generation out there that's getting prepared up that are about to turn 18 and sign up and get going. I know a lot of kids that I'm talking to that are, I see a lot at the, th- the theme parks at Chapman park at, you know, all these places I go to conventions and whatnot. Uh, kids that are fans of the, the, you know, the various YouTube channels that are out there, mine, one of them, but like all the other people that, you know, I'm friends with or uh, that are in this community and you know they i always see them they're either cosplaying they're in pads like they're training or whatnot so there's a new generation out there that is ready to get up and there's some there's some pretty bitch and freaking up-and-comers that are like oh shit i can't wait to go down yeah no there is a couple of sliders out there that i'm just like dude like wow (laughs) just wow um yeah (laughs) it's just it's insane um but I, I just think it's, it, we're in good hands. I mean, you got to think about the world of haunt in a in a today world of how much of its expansion. I mean, we have conventions, we have things going on year round now. I mean, CreepyCon is coming up this weekend, you know, and mm-hmm. and that made it out in the Inland Empire. That's now like out there. That's their biggest convention out there for horror themed stuff. Back out like in, in you know where 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 we at like the Long Beach area and stuff. Midsummer Scream is like the biggest convention in the summer. That's like the Comic Con for hot and horror. This past year in two thousand last summer, what happened? It was a madhouse. How just to kind of like give. Oh, it was the biggest it's ever been. Yeah. To how big Halloween has become. Ten years ago, I don't think we had any like big Halloween conventions, or at least there was just. They were coming up, but it wasn't I as big it was as this. LA Scream at the Pasadena. Scream LA Pasadena. and all that, yeah. Yeah, Scream LA. That was it. And now, what, Midsummer had lines of people going throughout downtown Long Beach. Yeah. Two hour long lines to get into the convention. They oversold the Long Beach Convention Center. Yeah. That's how popular this season, this event, this ho- the Halloween in general has gotten. What? Um, <laughs> You know, when I compare it to the Comic Con of 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 convention, you know, of horror conventions, when you think of Comic Con, you think of all these big name studios going in and then announcing all their stuff. For Midsummer Scream, it's all these big name horror legends in the in the community, in the in the in the acting world, in the in the haunt world. They're all coming together to do panels about an anniversary of this movie or a, a legacy panel with these kids and and uh, what is freaking L.A. Haunted Hayride doing this year and what is Horror Nights doing this year and what and who is Murdy going to bring on stage this year? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't think I was going to see Slash and fucking Kurt Hammond in one day. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. You know, like, and Midsummer Scream did that for me. So... I mean, it's getting big. I mean, they're gonna build a Halloween Horror Nights year round in Las Vegas. Yeah, they. I mean, it's I'm curious to see how that like plays out. Universal did it. 
Universal did with the um, Universal Monsters. House of right? Horrors. Walking... House of Horrors. Yeah. Walking Dead. Um, but Vince, yeah. you do make a good point about that because it is true. Like you, you start to think, okay, this is from what it's being told. This is going to be an entire like twenty acre, like a hundred and twenty, a hundred and ten thousand square foot land, and you know that's they're saying they could fit up to like five or six mazes at a time. It's going to be in this like giant building and stuff. In the concept art that we were showing, we saw like icons from Orlando and stuff. So I'm like, that makes it even. I can get to fucking or- I can get to Vegas faster than I can get to Orlando. I can see my icons. See, I'm cur- I'm curious like how they're going to go about that. Like are they going to like rotate the mazes like every 6 months or like like what's what's the time frame for, or I'm sorry, not mazes, houses. Um like I'm like I like I want to know obviously there's going to be draw. People love horror, people love the Universal classics um uh, for the you know the, the icons of of horror that Universal Orlando has created. Um, like people on on the West Coast, like you said, a lot easier to get to Vegas than it is to Orlando. So, like, I'm cu- I'm just curious to see like what it's gonna look like and and how, like how how they're gonna stay relevant and make Halloween like attractive to like for a year round event. Because that's because I feel like like for me personally, that's what makes Halloween so special is that it only comes once a year and that. You know, like I love haunt. It goes from September to to Halloween. That's my special. Like I get to celebrate Halloween time, just like Christmas. Like I love Christmas, but I like to celebrate Christmas from the day after Thanksgiving to Christmas to Christmas Day. <laughs> yep. No, I'm I'm the same way. I think I I get what you're what you're saying here. It's, it it feels like it would be extremely difficult to keep the the excitement and attention and just interest of that one whole that place with six mazes uh keeping that relevant keeping that consistent and, and i mean i will i will say that like part of the reason why like pass holders for for knots then you know they go through the same maze 10 times a night is to find all the easter eggs right like that's that's definitely you're definitely going to have the people that are going and you know spending money and going to to look and see all the you know cool little hidden things that they can find but like what do you do once you find them all? Yeah. Um, so far from everything that I've read up on it, because it was pretty shocking news to start the year off, to be honest with you. Oh, definitely. Um, and it makes my job really easy because I'm like, I have news I can talk about. Let's talk about <laughs> it. Um, but, you know, the the funny part about it is, um, you know, when I was reading the emails that they were sending out to like what's going to be in it and, 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 and things that they quoted and stuff, you know, they quoted – Obviously, all the Universal monsters. That's probably going to be a staple of that event because without mm. without those monsters, I don't think that would have solidified not only the horror genre but Universal as a whole as a company. Because when you think of Universal, the first thing majority of people think about are either John Hughes movies or fucking the monsters. So mm. the well, monsters. Wait, let's let's let's. Okay, let's. You, you know, you just you <laughs> took that in the wrong direction, or the, the fucking monsters. Okay, there there, there you, you go. go. I you took that in the wrong direction. I mean, hey, you could take 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 the second thing that you said in a, a different direction too. The monsters that do what now? I didn't know John Hughes did that to the monsters. <laughs> you didn't see that John Hughes movie? I didn't. Oh, I must John have paid. Hughes. I must have paid the extra. <laughs> I must have paid the extra for PH. Was it was it was it like an after credit scene? It might have been. But uh, but anyway, you know, I am I am curious too. Like, how are, is it going to be like a like a single ticket thing or do you think that they're going to be like oh go see this house for 20 bucks go well, see I, this house no it's going to be a single ticket thing so from what i'm understanding they also met they also drop names like jordan pill uh james wan and uh jason blum who owns blum house um so the way i look at this have them there for a couple years maybe have like a, a separate thing just for halloween like every halloween they maybe are going to do something different or this is going to mm-hmm. be here from this long to this long but uh, it's a good, also it's a good marketing point for Blumhouse because if the movie's scary enough or it's got enough material, they could just be like, "All right, let's transfer this over to a maze at the Vegas location and use it to promote the film." It's great for Blumhouse because literally, I feel like ninety percent of the Blumhouse movies that come out now are made to be a maze. Like I just, I just saw Megan a couple weeks ago, and the entire time I was watching it, I was like, "Oh, 
that's a maze. Oh, I think I'm the I be, think I'm the only person in the world. Room. I think I'm the only person in the world who did not like that film. I didn't I, like it. I want to see it though. That shit looks tight. It it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was just kind of meh. Uh, literally, I was watching it. I was like, "All right, cool. This is the room that you walk into. This is the room that you transition into. This is the this is the finale scene." Like, I was l- literally watching that and be like, "All right, yep, Horror Nights Maze confirmed." It's, it's so probably we gonna have uh, Chucky. We have the Blumhouse Megan Maze, and then we have uh, Evil Dead Rise. Three 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 mazes confirmed potentially. I want the Last of Us. To, to you know, the studio or to this Nevada theme park? Because if they're going to have movie mazes based just out there, considering that they, See, I, they opened this year with their own, like, a, a, what was it? How many? Custom or like original? They're, they're, yeah, their original concept mazes. Going more towards original concepts than they are well, trying to. This... See, I can see them, though, doing, like, if like taking like a sinister and making that into a maze and putting that at Vegas because it's an older horror movie that still potentially has some draw. Gotcha. Okay. I, I, I was looking at the fact that uh, the team behind this is actually the Orlando creative team. And if you know anything about their original mazes, you need to do your homework because those fucking mazes are the most beautiful Wait, mazes so if, I've if ever if seen Orlando's in my life. Orlando's behind this, can they just like drive another five hours and, and do some of the Orlando builds out in California? Yeah, you know. I mean, you know, you know, they, they did bring are. Scarecrow last year and that was an Orlando maze. And I think that was the best one at Horror Nights last year. Yeah, but that's just me. Called, didn't they have a maze called Closed Down? Which maze? I thought- um, I thought uh, either Orlando or LA, they have a maze called Ghost Town. That probably was Orlando. That seems like an Orlando original. You like that because when, when it came out, we were all just like, fucking really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All I know is, listen, uh, to kind of wrap it up with this, because I know I'm looking at the time and Vincent has to head out pretty soon. He's going to so, turn into a pumpkin at seven. Yeah, yeah, he turns into a pumpkin at seven. So we got to get him in the patch so he can rest for the night. Um, you know how it is. Yeah. So, with all that being said, I think the hands of uh, the haunt world are are pretty safe with keeping relevancy every year. Um, it seems like this community is growing more and more, and we're seeing it every single day. Um, and we love that, and we do love that. We do indeed. Uh, and as far as 2023 goes, I mean, we got a lot of fucking movies coming out this year. We got a lot of great things coming out this year. It's already killing it. Pedro Pasco, this is his year. The Last of Us has been fantastic so far. Mandalorian Season 3 is following up right after that. I mean, th- this first half of 2023 is Pedro Pascal's. So I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> so, gentlemen, I'll see you guys this time next week. I don't know. about. We'll figure out a time, but next week for sure. Uh, for episode two, shoot the shit. Uh, thank you for joining me on the season three premiere. I feel like we're gonna have a fun season together. Um, Great, I'm excited. I'm excited too. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, a lot of things coming up. Uh, AJ and I even might go on tangents about wrestling sometimes because we are wrestling fans. This is true. But we're gonna go watch Monday Night Raw right now. Yes. Enjoy, enjoy. And AJ or er, and Vincent might have some. Uh, I don't know. Vincent's gonna have some Vincent quotes. So <laughs> Vincent's gonna have some Vincent you know, Vincent things. Vincent quotes. <laughs> That's the segment. Vincent quotes. Vincent does Vincent things. Vincent quotes. <laughs> Vincent does Vincent things. And we, you never know. We might get another fucking. Uh, you might get lucky every now and then and get an episode where AJ's yelling at the cats again. So hey, hey, and that happens often. So there's a high chance of that. <laughs> and feel free to just leave it on unmuted so we can get the audio. It'd be great. All right, we'll get the audio next time. Um. <laughs> Shout out to Trixie Trickster. Go buy her merch. This is a good friend of mine. Uh, this co- this is actually a very comfy t-shirt. So uh, I got it as a Christmas present. So I'm very happy about it. Go check out our merch shop, Knights of Horror, on Teespring. Links in the description. Follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror as well. On TikTok at the Knights of Horror. Twitter at Knights of Horror. And make sure you're subscribed with that bell. Don't be aware every time we put up a new video. Oh, my God. That was impressive. That was good. That's a lot of practice. That's five years of practice. I feel like you practiced that. Every day in the mirror when I wake up and say, God damn, really? you are an ugly motherfucker. Bitch, I'm just going to the other and I'm going to take a shower, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs> uh, with all that being said, uh, we love each and every one of you. We'll see you guys next week for another episode of Shoot the Shit. And tune in next week because we'll have Creepy Con coverage for you guys right here on the channel. 
Peace out. Peace.